A few weeks ago, the World Trade Organization held a public forum talking about all kinds of things. If you look at the program, it ranges from the trade war between China and America to the sporting goods industry. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, most of these talks were pretty boring and unless you have a stake in the global sporting goods trade, I wouldn't recommend watching the entire VOD. However, there was one talk that did interest me. On the first day, a panel was hosted concerning the global fishing subsidies and it had some pretty interesting people on it. They managed to get some dude from the Canadian Parliament, a UN Secretary and two fishery experts. And while this does sound like the setup for the worst bar joke ever, they did actually have some interesting things to say. The video is quite long and at times it's pretty boring, but do not fret dear viewer, because I sat through the whole thing so you don't have to. The key point is about fishing subsidies, which admittedly, I didn't know much about before this panel. However, after watching the whole panel, I can safely say that across the globe, there are many nations that are essentially bankrolling the destruction of our oceans. This statement may seem a little far-fetched to some, and to my knowledge, the Chinese and American governments aren't pumping millions of dollars worth of crude oil into the ocean just for the hell of it. No, they're just doing it in a more discreet way. As of 2018, the sum total of all fishing subsidies amounted to $34 billion. Of that amount, almost two-thirds was used to increase the capacity of fishing fleets. All of this money is funneled into what is known as harmful subsidies, which are subsidies aimed at promoting overfishing. Money is often given to the nation's largest fishing fleets to underwrite fuel costs, allowing industrial trawlers to sail into the deep ocean to fish, which would not be profitable without these subsidies. China alone has increased its harmful subsidies by 105% over the last decade. Now, it's all well and good pointing out that these governments are funding overfishing, but what are the actual effects? What's going on in the oceans? According to the UN, 60% of the world's fish stocks are fished to their absolute maximum sustainable extent, with 33% being overfished and only 7% being underfished. This graph from the UN is also clear that the trend of overfishing is only increasing over time, with more and more of the global stocks becoming overfished, largely due to the unsustainable and taxpayer-funded mega-fleets of deep ocean trawlers. As the depletion of fish marches ever forward, fishing companies are struggling to provide the large fish we all love to eat. Bluefin tuna has declined by 97% of its natural population due to overfishing, removing a key apex predator from the ocean ecosystem. As we continue to run out of large fish at the top of the food chain to eat, we are starting to fish down the food chain. This isn't a new thing either. This article published bloody 21 years ago pointed out what was going on, and not much has occurred to stop the practice. Generally, fishing down the trophic levels is a pretty bad idea, because instead of skimming the top predators off of the ecosystem, you run the risk of not only overfishing smaller fish species, but causing a cascading effect of ecosystem collapse by undermining the food source of the larger marine organisms. Now that we've established that overfishing is a problem, let's take a brief look at the other ways the ocean is dying a horrific and painful death. I'm sure you were aware by now, but it turns out the planet's getting a bit warmer, and the oceans, being part of our planet, are also getting a bit warmer. You may think that a change of a few degrees is not that much. I mean, the ocean is pretty big after all. However, it turns out that it's a pretty big deal if you are a coral. Another five-year report by the Australian government was recently published on the status of the Great Barrier Reef, and surprise surprise, it's not looking too good. A combined effort of rising sea temperatures, extreme events and marine heat waves, all linked to climate change, has reduced the coral cover around the reef by almost 50%. The problem isn't the events, as natural disasters are part of the coral's ecosystems and they do recover given a decade or two. The problem is, we don't have a decade or two. These events are becoming so frequent that the coral doesn't have enough time to recover, resulting in mass bleaching events and an overall reduction in coral cover. The bleaching of coral reefs has been an issue for as long as I can remember, and I fucking swear, if the boomers destroy the reef before I even get a chance to see it, I'm calling for international boomicide. I'm going to finish off this section by briefly talking about ocean acidification. Now I'm not going to go too into specifics because that really should be its own video, however I will talk about its implications. According to the former Chief Biodiversity Advisor to the World Bank, aka somebody who knows what they're talking about, the acidity of the oceans will more than double in the next 40 years, a rate more than 100 times faster than acidity changes in the last 20 million years, making it unlikely that marine life could adapt. 
Ocean acidification is happening and is one of the more destructive phenomenons caused by human activity. Increasing pH could impact coral reef development, squid metabolisms and depress immune systems in some organisms. However, the most disturbing effect is that on the small boys of the ocean. Any organism with a calcium-based shell could be in big trouble. This ranges from corals, crustaceans, mollusks and some of the smallest boys in the ocean, such as coccolithopores. These organisms form the bottom rungs of the food chain. If they kick the bucket, then we could be facing ecological collapse in the oceans a hundred times worse than that caused by overfishing. Now, I know what you're thinking. It's all well and good pointing out that this is all going on, but what can we do about it? And what are the governments going to do about it? Well, remember at the start of the video when I mentioned the World Trade Organization was holding a public forum? Well, part of the forum was discussing the World Trade Organization's goals to end harmful subsidies. The UN Sustainable Development Goal 14.6 calls for the probation of certain harmful fishing subsidies which contribute to overcapacity and overfishing by 2020. This means we have a grand total of two months left to completely eliminate harmful fishing subsidies. So how close are we then? Well, we're not off to a good start, with the EU recently setting Baltic fishing quotas at levels above the legal requirements in October. However, the real target is in December, as by that time the World Trade Organization should have come to an agreement on these subsidies. Until then, the best thing you can do is make some noise about it. Be that guy at the party talking about sustainable fishing. I mean, after all, what else are you going to talk about? The key point is to raise awareness and make a fuss about all these unsustainable quotas that are killing the oceans. In theory, politicians should listen to us. I mean, that's definitely going to happen, right? But seriously, about the only thing you can do at the moment is vote for green politicians, and probably not the ones that are burning down the rainforest. You know, just a little, little thing there. However, for some people across the world, it's not that black and white. Fishing employs 40 million people across the globe, often in some of the poorest regions of the world. It's simply not feasible to stop fishing in these areas. Fish provides a massive amount of easily obtainable protein to the poorest communities in the world. However, this is not a reason to oppose cutting of these subsidies. Oftentimes, these massive fuel subsidies are not going to local fishers, but to large corporations, using money taxed from these poor fishing communities to sail into the deep ocean to overexploit the resources. Governments across the globe should be slashing these useless subsidies and investing into coastal, sustainable communities instead of propping up these failing industrial fishing fleets. That about wraps up this video, folks. I'm going to use all the sources from the World Trade Organization and the UN in the description, where you can check them out for yourselves if that's what you're into. Thanks for watching until the end. I'm not sure when the next video will be. It all depends on this thing called real life. I'm sure you're aware of that. However, until then, you should subscribe and click on the bell notification to make sure you catch my next video whenever it comes out. And if you want to see some more preachy videos that I'm woefully underqualified to talk about, then uh, check out some of the videos on screen now. That's all from me, and I'll see you next time.